Welcome to Adrian Gifts, a mid-sized mail order company. Adrian's customers are the sort of people who'd rather not spend their holidays traipsing around the local mall, but instead do all their holiday shopping by phone. Now this is Lou Schroeder, the man who runs Adrian's computer room operation. Lou knows that taking orders is the backbone of Adrian's business. Last year, problems in Adrian's distributed order processing system very nearly brought the company to its knees. Yeah, Lou took on the job of finding a new system. He evaluated dozens of software packages and eventually selected one that runs on two HP 3000s, one installed here at the home office and the other in Orlando. Lou's partner in this project is Linda Kahn, the chief financial officer. Their choice of platform surprised some people, and they're still being asked questions about it. Today, you'll see many of those questions answered. And as you watch, remember that although Adrian Gifts isn't a real company, the story you're about to see is true in all of its particulars. These things have actually happened to real HP 3000 users. They could happen anywhere, in any business, at any time. Well, I got the old man's signature on the PO, but I'm not sure he thinks you got him such a bargain. You know, we started asking questions again. Unix, right? Yep. Well, Lou, I mean, every time he opens a newspaper, all he reads about is open systems in Unix. I mean, he signed, but he still wants to know why we didn't buy Unix system. You know, I don't think he really knows why he wants it. He just knows what he reads in the business press. You know, I really like the old man. But every time that that guy gets on an airplane, I wind up with a new IS strategy. I mean, I know that the 3000 is the best machine for the job, but well, what do you think I should do? Me? I don't know, I'm just the bean counter. I mean, you're the computer genius. You know, but I do read the same newspapers that the old man reads, and I can see his point. I mean, every article says the same things. Unix is cheap. Unix is the future. Unix is the answer to everybody's computer problems. Put it this way. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes if anything should go wrong. Linda, now you know why we bought a 3000. First off, the software was right. Now, there were a half a dozen Unix packages that we could have used, but the best one happened to run on the 3000, right? But, Lou, the 3000's been around for over 20 years. And when you get down to it, that's why the old man is asking so many questions. I mean, he's worried that we're trying to run his business on 20-year-old technology. Well, then he's missing the point. Now, if you get down to it, Unix is just an operating system. Sure, it's a good system, but it's, it's not the only system. And the things that made it unique just a couple of years ago, well, they just aren't unique anymore. I mean, client server, right? Risk, open system. You don't have to buy Unix to get any of that stuff. Now, you name any of those buzzwords of the week, and it's on the 3000, Linda. Technologically, the 3000 is just as open as Unix. OK. If you wanted something as open as Unix, why don't you just buy Unix and be done with it? I mean, it certainly would have made him happy. Because I wanted something you can't get on Unix. The reliability of the 3000. Now, don't forget, we've been using a 3000 down in manufacturing for years, and we've never had a single problem with it that we couldn't straighten out in 10 minutes. I've just never seen anything so reliable. So Unix isn't reliable? Of course it is. Look, Linda, don't get me wrong. Now, I'm not living in the past here. Open systems are probably the, the best thing to happen to the computer business in, in 20 years. And we have HP's Unix servers and personnel. They make sense down there. And every engineer in development has a Unix workstation on his desk. But this is order processing. Now, when I put a new system in here, I'm betting the company that it's going to work every day, all day. This is no place to gamble. And I know the 3000 could do the job. Well, I suppose you're right. But, of course, Unix would have been cheaper. Hey, don't be so sure about that. Of course, the hardware would have been cheaper. But there's a lot more to a Unix server than the cost of the hardware. If you look at the overall cost of installing a Unix system, you haven't saved much compared to a 3000. I know, I know, but I'm the one who's fielding all the questions on how much we spent. Look, can we just go over those costs just one more time? Sure. Look. Now, now here's a quote from one of the packages that we decided not to use, right? Now, this is one that runs on a distributed network of Unix servers. Now, we found out that if we wanted to use it for more than one shift each day, well, we'd have to buy an additional software package just to do our nightly backups. The standard tool that came with the Unix system turned out to be completely inadequate. Is that all? No, 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 that's just the beginning. 
Now, we'd have had to buy a print managing software package as well. And I just found out that the, uh, the standard Unix tool couldn't handle a paper jam. And it couldn't prioritize the uh, order summary reports. And we were looking to add on more software to handle security on the network. Well, how much did all that software cost? By the time we finished paying for the add-on software, the Unix bargain would have cost more than the 3000 But Lou, all right, if all that's true, why all the excitement about Unix? I mean, why isn't the industry moving everything to the 3000s? Because for most applications, you don't need a mainframe class system. But this isn't most applications. This is order processing. We've got to be up and running around the clock seven days a week. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that with Unix boxes. I'm just saying you can do it cheaper and more effectively on a 3000. In the last couple of years, owners of HP 3000 systems have been called upon to answer a lot of questions about their choice of system. You know, Hewlett Packard has been selling the 3000 since 1973. That's over 20 years now. Of course, the machines that we're selling today are far more powerful and far more flexible than the systems that we sold back in the 1970s. And although today's machines can be used to run the applications and technologies that people used in 1973 to run their businesses, at the same time today's systems can also be used to run the very latest technologies, things like risk architecture, local area networks, PC LANs and client server, all those sorts of things are available on today's HP 3000 system. Now this is a really unique combination when you stop to think about it. The flexibility of today's technologies in combination with the longevity of the 3000 gives our customers an absolutely unique competitive advantage over those people that are trying to use other sorts of platforms to run their businesses. We, we got our original HP 3000 in 1977. Since then, the upper compatibility has been tremendous. We've had very few problems moving from uh, the original 3000 upwards in the product line since then to the current uh, Nova series. Uh, we have uh, had to make very few changes in our applications. We've protected our investment over, over 3,600 programs. Now, just because the 3000 has been around for a long time, that doesn't mean that 3000 users are in any way stuck with using old technology. You see, unlike many proprietary systems, the HP 3000 has really been able to adapt in a world that lately seems to be totally focused on open systems and on Unix in particular. In fact, let's take a look at what makes Unix so popular these days. You see, the biggest reason for Unix's popularity is its openness. What that means is that if you had a Unix workstation, and let's suppose that you were asked to develop an application program to run on that Unix workstation, and then suppose that once you were finished, you were asked to move that application program to another Unix system, maybe one that came from another vendor altogether. Well, what you'd find is that moving software between one version of Unix and another is on the whole a pretty simple and straightforward thing to do. Because from the point of view of an application programmer, all Unix systems look pretty much the same. Now what that's done is it's led to the presence of a wealth of application software for Unix systems. And a lot of people in the 1990s found themselves installing Unix systems simply because that's where the applications were. When we first looked at the application, the warehouse management application, we thought we would bring it in-house and install Unix computers in every warehouse. Uh, when we realized that we would end up with a Unix computer sitting right next to an HP 3000, we thought we'd take a look and see how much would it take to port the application to the HP 3000 so that it could run with all of the existing applications. So why not simply use the HP 3000 to run all the applications? Well, the problem up until a couple of years ago was that just as the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle need to be cut to match in order to fit together, software that was developed on Unix workstations didn't fit on MPE systems because the interfaces were different. They just didn't match. You had to do a lot of re-engineering of the application software in order to make it fit the MPE puzzle. Well, in the 1990s, we've done a lot of work to correct that problem. And fundamentally, what we've done is we've put some new interfaces on MPEIX. The old ones are still there for your existing applications, but the new interfaces are there so that we can now take software from Unix systems and port it to MPE. And here's the kicker. Do it with no more effort, no more fuss and commotion or cost than it would take to port that same software from one version of Unix to another. 
So you see that the message of the open system on the HP 3000 really makes a lot of business sense. If somebody had told me that uh, they wanted us to port an application from one computer to another, my first reaction would be, hey, let's not port it, let's just get another computer, because, because it's far easier to get another computer. But we found moving this application from the HP 9000 to 3000 incredibly easy uh, because of Oracle and uh, HP's C compiler. Now, this idea of porting software between different kinds of computers has just turned out to be enormously powerful. I mean, not only has it allowed us to bring new applications to the HP 3000, but more importantly, it's allowed us to bring whole new technologies to the platform. So, for example, by porting TCP IP to the 3000, we suddenly find we can do internetworking with MPEIX. That means you can put your 3000 on the same network as PCs, Unix boxes, or other kinds of computers that you may be using in your shop today, and not have to maintain a whole separate network just for the 3000. Or another example, our support for SQL with the image database has made it possible for us to have client server applications working with the HP 3000. So you can run a program on a PC and access the data that you have stored on your HP 3000 today. Now, only a few years ago, if you wanted the benefits of open systems, there was only one way that you could get them. You had to move your whole operation, lock, stock, and barrel, off of whatever platform you were using and move it all over to Unix. With the HP 3000, that's not necessary. And that puts our HP 3000 customers at an enormous competitive advantage because they don't have to re-engineer their current operation, change everything around in order to take advantage of, of these technologies on a new platform. Instead, they can continue to use the applications and the software and the technologies that you're using today on the platform that they're using today and wait for open systems to come to them. That's what's happening today with the HP 3000. And you know, there's absolutely no better example of that than Image SQL. The Image SQL announcement by HP was really welcome to me because it did give me the ability to start planning for a migration to advanced relational database type tools and very powerful end user access type tools. HP introduced Image SQL, which is an SQL layer around an image database. This allows us to access an image database like we ac access any other SQL database using standard PC front-end SQL tools like Visual Basic or Q&E from Pioneer software. It gave me that ability to begin to move ahead into these new areas of technology in a low-risk, non-threatening, to the business type of a client-server application. So the HP 3000 is an open system, and Unix systems are open too. So why would you choose one over the other? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Okay, darling. Lou, yeah. I just walked over from the lab. I that was talk a to hell of a storm coming in, you yeah, yeah, I just beat the rain in. Lou, I've got to talk to you about your choice of system for the new OP software. Now that's a problem for you, huh? Yeah. I mean, no, not right now, but it sure as hell is going to be. Lou, I've got five major programming projects on my plate this year alone. Uh, I know. I'm already behind in one of them. Uh-huh. Now I find out that the OP software you have is a, is a proprietary system? So, Jason, I still don't see the problem. Lou, all my guys cut their teeth on Unix. They got Unix workstations on their desks. That's right. They've got Unix up in personnel. They got Unix in engineering. How am I supposed to make that technology fit into this this dinosaur you got us. Jason, calm down, all right? Now, have you even looked at this system, huh? We've already got it on the same network as your Unix servers, right? It's got the same programming tools that your guys are using on your workstations. It's got VI, it's got op grep, all that techie stuff you guys love, it's all on the 3000. So you're saying that my guys can uh still use their workstations to develop software for the 3000 thing. That's right. I thought it was proprietary. Jason, proprietary doesn't mean closed. No. What about the, um... Oh, the storm must be worse than we thought. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jason, the, uh, backup power supplies that we bought, uh, how long are they going to hold things together if the power fails? Yeah, I, I don't know, Lou. Uh, not long, anyway. <laughs> The, uh, the thing that distinguishes the 3000 from, 
from other hardware platforms is its almost legendary reputation for, for reliability. And if you're trying to do mission critical business transaction processing, then reliability almost has to be at the top of your list of absolutely got to haves. We saw the 3000 as a better transaction processing machine than the Unix system. We were familiar with the 3000, we had a lot of experience with the 3000. We saw that long term HP was adding features into the 3000 that would bring it to the point where Unix was. The, the so called open systems features were coming out of uh, HP and, and getting put into the 3000. We saw no need to chase the Unix star and, and put a Unix system in because everybody else was. The 3000 is based on Hewlett Packard's PA RISC hardware design. It's the very same chipset that's used in our very successful line of Unix servers. But coupled with that, we also use the MPEIX.